You gotta get me strong. I definitely gotta come off my hands. Seven years out the game and I'm back home just to see the kingdom under siege and the temple gone. The ones who persecuted us do the same thing. Now they ten toes in for the thrills and the fame. Watching people jump ship like the gospel on fire. Drop the drop, drop the off, straight the truth for a lie. Man, this world so cold, all these souls on ice. Yeah, you find yourself a cave of your identity. Gospel rap wag, now nah, huh, is that right? I guess it's better flipping birds and cooking. And crack right and tell these women they look better from the back right and kill another black man on the mat right lay your armor on the floor of course you free to go that bill be promised you the one are you the devil ho i've been around a long time i've seen it all before back call the crown to the floor kings let's go What's up good people, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, it's been going for a minute, but I've been grinding. I promise I got some projects lined up that I will be posting shortly. And I'm gonna do my best to try to post more frequently and um, pretty much try to stick to a schedule and get some good content out there for you. But my problem is, I want good content. I don't wanna just give you anything. I wanna give you my best and you know, the best takes time, quality, can't be rushed. So that's been a hold up. But I have some good news for you today. I had the opportunity to sit down with a good, good friend of mine, a good mentor, a brother in the Lord I've known for years, somebody that's been in the CHH thing, Christian hip hop for a long time, uh, my dude, Petty D. I got a chance to sit down with him and do an interview with him, you know, just talk about some stuff, uh, the state of Christian hip hop, you know, how it used to be back in the day in uh, VA, where we used to have a, a weekly, pretty much we had a club, and we every, every Friday night we used to get down. We had, of course, your boy Truly, I was the live DJ, and we used to get down on it, and um, pretty much just reminiscing about that, how how he first came to find out about it and all that good stuff. The interview was actually uh, just a snippet of a bigger project that I'm doing that I will be sharing with you later once it's finished and completed. Um, but just be on the lookout for that because it's big and it's, it's going to be in depth and in detail. And it's going to talk about a lot of stuff that uh, we as Christian artists and, and people that believe in the faith and all that good stuff, we really don't talk about that much. So I'm going to dive into it. Um, but without further ado, here go the interview with my man Petty D. And if you don't know about him, look him up. I'm going to leave a link for him and his music down in the description below. So uh, bless the man. Listen to his music. Like I said, he's been in it for years. He is a real OG in this thing. So, uh, yeah, enjoy. Oh. My name, my legal name is Dwayne Petty. My stage name is Petty D. I got my stage name from my legal name, Dwayne Petty. Uh, I think when I was, I got in the music instrument, I was 14 years old. Uh, I used to work in a record store. And I remember in elementary school, they used to pass out the SAT test. Um, they used to pass out the test where they would say, uh, pass them out last name first, first initials last. And my test came back uh, Petty D. So it was like my last name and uh, my first initial. And I, yeah. I wasn't even a rapper then. I was like, man, if I ever rap, you know, that's going to be my name. And it just kind of stuck. Because that was during the time you had Heavy D, Kumo D, Ice oh, T. Yeah. Was, had the little initials by their name. So that's how I got Petty D. And, it just, and then as, uh, as time grew on and everybody kind of got away from the initials, I just changed the singular to a plural so i took the y and changed the i and the ee -E, make it all one word so it's just kind of stuck but um been in the music industry uh over way well over 20 years um i was working a record store i um got in the industry meeting a lot of major artists and and um was really a student of the of the industry um couldn't stay in the store forever though and uh, got in the streets yeah yeah, and um, 
It's crazy. Got in the streets, man, and um, and there was a lady that lived a couple of houses down from me. She's always tell me that God got a call on your life. You're gonna win many people to the Lord, and and uh, by this time I was rapping, and all my homeboys was was um doing major things, touring, and cats like uh Two Live Crew, uh, um, who else? Um, ninety five South sixty nine boys. These boys is going platinum selling a million records just in Florida and traveling the world and and it, you either was in the music industry or you was in or you was in the dope game or you, you was in the Robin Jack game. So, you know, down in Florida. And so uh but everything, all this crazy stuff was happening around me. My sister went to prison, my homeboy, uh who I was in a rap group with, he went to prison. Our DJ shot a dude and he he went to prison and just all this stuff was going on around me and I was just like Man, I gotta do something different with my life, man. And uh, the lady was Miss Lisa, Sister Lisa. Shout out to Sister Lisa. You know what I'm saying? She's always tell me that guy got a call on my life, and I thought she was crazy, man. And um, but you know, I started going to church and and um, saw what had God had available for me, and and I just said, man, forget music. I want, I want Jesus, man. I want, I want the Lord. So. Um, Start going to church, man, and turn my life around, bro. And, and um, then I heard a group called SFC, Soldiers for Christ, at a, at a Christian skating ring, um, it's Christian night, skate night. Yeah. And um, they was rapping some gangster stuff, you know what I'm saying? But it was, it was, it was, it was from the. I had never heard rap from an aspect of trying to live right, but living in the hood, but living right, yeah. trying to do right from that aspect, and it was different for me. And it, was, it, it spoke to me because it was where I was in my life at the moment. And to hear rap music talk about where I was in my life, you know what I'm saying? I gravitated to it. And um, back then, it was tapes. So I had that tape like three times, man, and, and play it and pop it. And I said, man, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to do this because that, that record changed my life. It was Soldiers for Christ, SFC, Phase 3. So if, if y'all out there and y'all ever... Uh, uh, look up SFC Souls for Christ Phase Three. That was the album that changed my life. And um, man, I've been rapping for the Lord ever since. That's what's up, man. You know what? That's kind of I would say the DJing at the praise party and just finding music online. That's pretty much what kept me in line too. Just finding good stuff or stuff that I like that I I wanted other people to hear too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so. Uh, you already said who, who the first rap song you remember, but uh, do you remember how you found out about the praise party or, or uh, how you heard about it? Um, yeah, man, my homeboy, uh, my homeboy, uh, uh, Prime Minister, man, shout out to Prime Minister, man, Prime, uh. He's telling me, man, you got to go to this place, man. They be so crump, man. And he's just telling me about it over and over again. He was like, man, I done been like four, five times, and man, you know they love the Lord, and and they on fire for. They just he just kept telling me that they y'all was on fire for the Lord, and and they take care of you, man. They love hip hop because during that time, man, it was it was other devil, you know. No, you yeah. it was during the time where hip hop, Christian hip hop, was really being attacked by the church you know during the time where um where a lot of us didn't really have that avenue man uh, and um it was really growing and you know it wasn't like youtube and facebook and all this stuff was just real prevalent during the myspace time and stuff so we didn't it wasn't really prevalent like it is now you know what i'm saying i mean somebody could just say i i'm gonna be a gospel rapper and they just you know start writing about the lord but you know, to have avenues and radio shows and different venues and different people, and then to go somewhere where they know the music, people know the music, people are familiar with Christian hip hop, people are familiar with the music, the the ministry. Um, man, it was it was a breath of fresh air. And so, you know, when I first came, I just was so excited about the when we did the sound check and everything. I was like, man, it really got a real stage. It really got a real sound, you know, because yeah. most of the time we was going to churches who welcomed the ministry of, of Christian hip hop. But um, to this day, you know, a lot of a lot of them still don't know, you know, they still will be using the, the churches 
uh, sound system and you know and, and it's not really prepared for hip-hop it's not really prepared for the bass heavy music and vocals and stuff like that but to come somewhere where we were welcomed and uh, it was a blessing man and actually when um they took me out to dinner i was i was so excited man i i didn't know who was who and i was just saying i just want to meet the pastor and and just thank him and and I'm all excited and and uh because they had kind of kept it on the low because who the pastor was so that you could what I liked about the ministry is that it wasn't just about the music, it was about the lifestyle. And let me let me vet who the different artists we bring and make sure that they're about God's business. And um, you know, Bishop Cheney, he didn't even let me know he was the, the, the uh, apostle didn't even let me know he was the pastor at the time. Yeah. And I thank God for that because he was able to see the real me for who I was and what I was about to minister to the to the people, man. And when they let me know that they was um uh that uh, that he was a pastor and and that um uh, and then just to come and just the crowd and everybody know the lyrics and just the love, I fell in love. And so shout out to Prime Minister, man, and and then it and then it just kind of uh grew like wildfire and just really my second home like anytime possible would call me or anybody from um um from the uh you know from the praise party would call me i'm like i'm there when we was going on tour and you know, i'm there you know yeah. and um you know that's that's so that's how i found out first time and uh after that i was telling all my friends and you know off and, and man these people take care of they love the lord and it just was rare man it was very rare and, and, uh, that's what made it unique. Uh, what's one of your fondest memories from? I know, I know you've been there a bunch of times, but uh, what's one of your best memories from from uh, performing at the praise party? One of my best memories was one summer I was on tour. We did, I think we did like, a, like 18, 20 city tour. Might have been a, a more than that, but we had been on the road so long. No, it was, it was more dates than that because we was out there three months. But uh, we had been on the road so long, we had ran out of all of our product. And um, I remember doing, doing the event, and I got on the stage, and, 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 and Pastor got on the stage with me, and I let everybody know, you know, um, we apologize, but, you know, we, we, we know that everybody's probably already got the album, yeah. For everybody that don't have the new music, because I think I had dropped a new record. So we was like, for everybody that don't have a new record, we apologize. But we're completely sold out of music. And um, and uh, <coughs> but I'm going to sign autographs and I'm going to be um, I'm going to be out here meeting everybody and, and chopping it up with everybody. And then I get off the stage and uh, go to the table and Apostle get up and he say, uh, "We want. I want everybody out there. I want everybody to go and buy up all pet DCDs." And I was like, "Wait, what is he doing? I just told him I ain't had no CDs. What's going on? Why is he telling everybody to go get CDs? We got CDs." So before I could even get up from the table, everybody was coming out and they was giving us like ten dollars or twenty dollars and saying thank you for the cd thank you for the cd and they was buying the whole congregation and everybody that was there bought invisible cds and they had me <laughs> crying they had my people that was on tour with me crying they had my wife crying they had the artists crying i'm like man you don't get this at no mainstream uh you know you will never get this at no mainstream uh concert you know People sowing seed and people buying invisible CDs and saying thank you for the CD. That I, only God can do that. Yeah. And that and that just that just let me know the benefit of you know encouraging people in the Lord. Man, that's what I love about rapping for God is that people really push to go mainstream and just to get. They want the the recognition is and, and you know in some aspects that's it's cool but ain't nothing like encouraging the people of god because ain't nothing like rapping for god and using your gift for god because our shelf life as a gospel artist is 
10 times longer than a mainstream artist. And the reason being is because of the subject matter of what we rap about and what we sing about, because it speaks to people's life. It's not, it's not um, a temporary base or what the hot trend is. It's not trend based. Yeah. That's why people right now in the kingdom can listen to Fred Hammond and Kirk Franklin and the, these records and really, because those records relate to your spirit, man. It ain't the old song. You know, it ain't the old dance and the old this and the old that. And when, when you just have music that minister to people's spirit, man, especially hip hop, when you have music that's minister to people's spirit, it do something different, man. It do something, it do something that, uh, that, that mainstream don't have. And I just wish that a lot more artists would come to recognize that, man, that you're speaking to people now. You're speaking to people when they want to take Jesus out their music and they don't want it, they want to make make it more industry based and all that. You really, you know, and I hear artists say, well, my music ain't for the church and my music for the world. Okay, but what about when them people from the world get saved? It's really supposed to be twofold. Your music is supposed to be if you rapping for the Lord, if you rapping, you're a Christian, and you represent Christ. It's supposed to actually be for the world, but also for the kingdom as well. Um, to encourage the lost, to save the lost, and encourage the saved. Yeah. You know, when a pastor get up and preach, he ain't just preaching to the lost, he's preaching to the people that have accepted Christ, because now we gotta walk this walk out. And um, so for me to be able to be an artist that um, minister through my music and to see things like that, like that, that situation only comes from the teaching and, the, and understanding sowing and reaping and understanding that this man blessed us, so we're gonna bless him. That's a that's a kingdom mentality, you know what I'm saying? And I never forgot that. I never forgot it, you know. And it's never happened any other. Sure, I've had people sewing and sew, but nobody never bought invisible CDs before. So that's that's definitely yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take that to my grave. That's definitely one that um that I that I stand out. Um of course, you know, some of the performances, man, and um times that we've ministered with other fellow gospel rappers all on one stage and it's all love and it's all um, relationship base and then being able to um being able to refer somebody else just like somebody referred me there's nothing like it i've never been nowhere like that you know? and but that's that night that everybody bought invisible cds and we were sweating and we was going crazy and just the energy never died out and man, i'll never forget that do you remember what the atmosphere was like um in the praise party because Everybody say it's like pretty much it ain't no place like it. Yeah. Like even even now, uh, when I go to other Christian concerts, I just you don't see the people get up and dance the same way. So do you remember the atmosphere that was there? Young, old, everybody knew the words, everybody knew the music, everybody was ready, everybody showed love, everybody stayed, people was till people was falling asleep. Literally, like, you know, until we sign and stuff. I've never experienced, I mean, I've been to some mega churches and I've wrapped in front of 15,000, 20,000 people, and, you know, and I've and I've wrapped in front of 10,000 people, I've wrapped in front of 10 people. But nothing, nothing like the praise party. Nothing like the praise party. From young to old, um, from, from everybody. For me, it's a big deal when everybody knows my lyrics, because that means that you understand what is going on with the music and that you really can get involved. And when you can do the dances, I used to look forward to, I used to come to the praise party so much, I used to feel obligated to give something that nobody else had. So I would do, I don't know if you remember this, but I would do music at the praise party before it even came out. Yeah. I would do songs, I would just record something and then, I'm going to the praise party. I'm I'm going to Virginia, and I got to do this new song, you know. And, uh, and praise, and and uh, when I started doing a lot of TV and film stuff, I would let actually let you guys know before everybody else knew. That's what's up. And I just felt obligated. It, it made me want to to give even more of myself and more of my ministry because the energy well, there was nothing like that energy. There was nothing like people knowing and understanding that. 
for me as a minister, I'm a minister as, at heart. So when I get up on the stage, I kind of, I'm there literally a day and a half. So for me as a minister, I try to figure out, do I need to do something that's more ministry based because I'm feeling the spirit of this place and they really need to be ministered to or are they getting the word and they just need to jam out, you know what I'm saying? And so every time I, every, every time I came, I just, man, they getting the word. And then sometimes God was put a word on my heart and, and um, God is using me prophetically from the, from the stage at certain times and, it's just not, it's just been always an amazing um reception. And it's not like it, man. And, and um I would say if there was ever opportunity for people to see see video wise what it was like and use the praise party as a template, because there's still nothing out here. 2018, there's still nothing out there. Yeah. All right, you spoke a little bit about the um Christian hip hop. Um what you feel about it currently, as far as the artist that's coming out now? It's rough, man, because I was called to this. I was called to this. Remember, I was a mainstream artist. And everybody around me was doing mainstream music and successful at mainstream music. Um, and I pretty much was next. Um, I was called to it, and when I started rapping for the Lord, there was no humongous Christian hip hop community websites and all this, and Facebook and Twitter and all this. So it was just straight ministry to me, where I would just go to the studio, record, and pass out my tapes in the hood. It was just like you know, back in the day when everybody used to pass out tracks. I used to pass out tapes and CDs like they was tracks, just doing the ministry. So I was called to it. So you got here, I am. 20 years later, going to somebody's um, somebody's uh, church 10 years ago, rapping. And, you know, a kid might have been eight, eight years, you know, eight years old. Hey, he is 10 years later, he's 18, or he was 12 years old, and now he's 20. Just say, well, I saw Petty D rap. I saw this rapper rap. I'm just going to be a Christian rapper. I'm just going to be a gospel rapper. And anytime something get popular, when everybody start doing it, everybody's intentions are not necessarily the same. So then when they don't get the success that you, they feel that this person have or what I should have or what I, somebody, because they don't know their history and they don't know who came before them, it becomes a competition spirit. Um, on the music side, yeah, it's a lot of great music out there now. It's a lot of great artists out there now. It's a lot of great beats. It's a lot to choose from. Um, but on the ministry side, you know, People, I can kind of see them kind of forsaking the ministry side of it um, for the fame, for the likes, and for the follows and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that come with it, but that's not to say that it's not artists out here still putting it down for the Lord that's really serious about ministry. But um, I just kind of eat the meat and spit out the bones. And I think it's a thing where I'm a people person, but I don't. I, my whole life, I've always been focus driven. Okay, what am I out here to do? What am I? What am I? What are my goals and what I'm trying to do? And how can I help somebody in what they're trying to do? Um, I necessarily don't overtly give my opinion on everything, um, but you have to recognize you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And if and if um, it's just somebody rapping positive, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was um first started i'm from florida i'm from the street so i've always you know gold tea chain the whole nine and i remember gospel rappers speaking against me and coming against me um so i'm i try to be careful you know if you if you're not quoting this many scriptures you're not a man of god and all that and everybody's path is different but uh if the end of it ain't about souls and changing lives then you know you got to you have to be mature in where you um where you get your teaching from. Uh, if you can't just get your teaching from gospel rap, then you're gonna be led astray. But you got to be in that word yourself and you have to be in the Bible-based um, ministry to know what to listen to and what not to listen to and what's, um, and what's good for your spirit and what not good for your spirit. I listen to gospel rap, that's good for my spirit. 
I gotta listen to it for it's good for my spirit. So and then there's some people I don't realize they just make great music. I just listen to it for that. They making great music, you know what I'm saying? But um you gotta be called to it because it ain't always it ain't it ain't what the internet um make it out to be. You think about it, man, if Facebook and Twitter and Instagram shut down today, a lot of these artists wanna know how to move. They wanna know how to move. They wanna know to you know, go to a praise party. They won't know to get out here and go to the prison ministries and the, you know what I'm saying, and go to the high schools. They ain't never had to move like that. It's just been the internet, likes and follows and, you know, and so it's in a good place to answer your question. It's in a good place with the growth, um, but with growth uh, comes, uh, with growth comes um, uh, everybody and their mama doing it. So you have to figure out who real and who fake and who doing it for the Lord and who just doing it because they grew up around gospel rap and now I decide I'm going to be a gospel rapper. Then they just turn secular, go mainstream. And, you know, you hey, we know how that turned out. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot of I just wish it was a lot more. People always say they wish they saw more unity in it, but. The unity is not going to happen until you show yourself unified. So I always have an open door for people who are trying to connect and stuff. And people don't really know because you get mentality that just like with me, I didn't know it was a Christian rap community out there. So I didn't know nothing about these young guys. They don't know nothing about a petty D. They don't know. They feel like they the hottest out there and they the one going to bring it to the mainstream and they're going to do this and they're going to blow up. and this. And so. so they don't have an understanding of they don't have an understanding of their own history. They got more history and, and reverence for the mainstream artists than they even do for the Christian artists that came before them. So I don't really, I don't really expect them to know about a petty duty or, or a prime minister. They should. That's your history. That's your um. That's your um. That's your bloodline, and and, and uh, represent for Christ. So you gonna rap for Christ and you gonna rap for God, man. Rap for God. But if you gonna Go mainstream, man. Go all the way mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Go go out there. You want to be with the wolves, go go eat with the wolves, man. You know, it's a lot of work still need to be done. There's people out here still getting killed. There's people out here still getting shot. There's people out here still hurting. And um, and there's a ministry for that. So you want to just make good music and just love the Lord and just do that too. But um, it, it, it's, you can only you can only bring it together by being an example. So that's what I'm trying to do is connect with cats like K Drama and D Mob and different artists and some of the young cats like uh, Calico, um, uh, cats from um, you know God Over Money and cats that's just like Jesus, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And then, even if you ain't saying Jesus, 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 don't get out here and denounce Christian rap. And Christian hip hop, and, and that's the thing that hurt my heart. This your background. This is where you from. You know what I'm saying? Don't get out here and diss it. You was a part of it at one time. Don't diss Christian hip hop. You put, they don't understand. Artists don't understand. They they set the whole king. They set the whole industry back when they do that. Yeah. It's just like for me, giving you an example. That's just like if you was a country bumpkin and you was from. Um, Mississippi and backwoods and then your your people web suspenders and all that but they love you so much they want you to go to college and then they put all their money together to get you to go to college and send you to New York City and send you to the best colleges and you know and then you graduate and all that and then you get a big job in a high rise building and your people come to see you and there's some old country people you know with suspenders in the lobby hey man these these people now here to see you Man, I don't know the whole country bumping people, man. That'll hurt our heart. Yeah. We're your parents, you know what I'm saying? We was there for you, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're not college and we ain't, but don't disrespect us. Well, yeah, you know, I'm I never moved back to Mississippi, I never moved back to Florida, them old country bumpkins, and you know, oh, uh, it's just a whack lifestyle down there. Oh, that's that's your bloodline, that's what you from. Don't disrespect that. Don't disrespect the people that came before you because. We got our head busting our head bump so you so it could be better for what you where you at right now. And, and that's the thing for me is that you don't want to say Jesus, 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 and all your raps, then that's your business. But 
don't disrespect the people that came before you because you feel like you're in a position where you can do that. That's not you show you show respect. You pay more homage hum to Run DMC and everybody else than than the people that was representing Jesus when it wasn't popular to represent Jesus. And that's not cool, man. That's not cool. So I, I just any artist watching this, just man, just do your homework and know what you if you don't know where it's, where it came from and where you've been, you don't know where you're going. Everybody want to be woke and know their history. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to be really be woke and know your history and you out here rapping for Jesus and you out here rapping for God and then know where the people um, that came from, know where the people that um, did it before you came from. I know I did my homework. Do your homework and um, and you'll know where you're going. You know what I'm saying? And just keep tearing, just keep carrying the torch for Christ, man. Because there's still a lot of lost souls out here, man. You know, and then do great music and don't put the music before the ministry. But make sure that your music is hot. You know, don't be out here because you're saying Jesus is like, and it's whack. But be be good at your at your craft. But man, you know, that's what I like. That's what I love about God over bunch money. It's all, you know, and the hog mob. You know, you know, I don't personally know them brothers, but. I'm I'm seeing ministry, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing the ministry. I'm seeing hot lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Tight um um tight beats. The craft is there, the ministry is there, and that's in uh, calico and cats like that, man. I'm saluting them. Um because it's showing it's showing the world and it's showing people that it can be done. So but it all depends on what you're in it for. And uh for me. My ministry was attacked so heavy, I actually literally had to find another avenue to put music out. And that's the, one of the reasons why God opened the door for me for TV and film. Because wow. my stuff, now everything, else, you know, you use a bunch of dudes out here, crunk, lit, and all that. Yeah. Petty D was doing that years ago. You know what I'm saying? Years ago. Respecting them. But to understand that I got my head bust so much so that I was an ostracized, so that what you're doing right now can actually be accepted. You know, now everybody, it's okay to have tats, you know what I'm saying, the grill and chained up, and I see him in the video, and I'm like, man, go for it. You know, that's what I was getting my head bust for. But it wasn't um, it wasn't always that, uh, that happened, you know, it wasn't always that available. But my heart has always been in ministry and still is in ministry, you know. So that's part of knowing your history, knowing that it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of souls need to be saved and lives need to be changed, man. I'm running on a little bit, but. I hope I answered the question. Oh yeah, man. Ace. Perfect, bro. Perfect, bro. Uh matter of fact, I mean, I don't even need nothing else. You done answered everything for me now. <laughs> but, uh, uh with that being said, what, what you got coming up in the future? What what you got in the works? Man, I actually got a lot of stuff in the works. Uh I've been recording for like the last two years, man. I've been working on a lot of music. Um, again, still doing a lot of TV and film. Um, I, my album Aliens starting to feel like detox. Yeah, um, <laughs> everybody know about it, and everybody know it's gonna come out. But we just been trying to find the right opportunity, the right situation, the right distribution situation, the right marketing to put it out, and so that it doesn't sound dated. We just keep recording new music and keep recording new music. Yeah. Um, and then the other um, then the other side is um life man like my son uh, my daughter just graduated my son uh, she just graduated from high school my daughter my, my son just finished his first year of college and really i'm ready to just crank it right back up man my kids is out of school and i'm about to just light it up um i've been uh I've been in the gym yeah, working out, you know what I'm saying? Getting ready, bro. Um, you know, mind, spirit, mind, and body hitting that gym. Um, writing new music, raising my children. Like I said, they um, they adults now. You know, say young adults. Um, my son will be 20 this year. My daughter will be 19. I'm super proud of them. Um, took this season of recording and and, and kind of staying. Not totally off the scene, but to rebuild and hit that reset button and do it and do it all over again. Yeah, and that's just that's just where I am. And sometimes that's not the most popular thing to do because everybody want to be on the scene and be seen. Um, I'd rather step off, rebuild, 
and do it all over again. Yeah. Man, yeah. look, I'm telling you like this, man. Ain't no way your stuff can be dated. I, I went and I looked at one of your um old videos mm -hmm. from way back. I think it was uh what is it? Uh shoot, what is it? I just downloaded it again so I can bump in the car. For real? Yeah, I just went and got it. Uh what was it? The nowhere no bed. Nowhere no bed. Nowhere no bed. Had to had to go hit that one back up. Yeah. Uh, Come on, nowhere no bed. They go nowhere no bed. Oh. No bed. <laughs> there she go right yeah. there. Nowhere no bed. He was spitting on it. Yeah, we about to wrap up, baby. But this nowhere no bed right here. Yeah. And uh, next month we'll be celebrating 22 years of marriage. That's what's up, man. Don't let nobody tell you it can't be done, man. It can be done, man. Yeah. yeah, man. But I'm so y'all just don't understand if you're watching this. I'm so ready for y'all hear this new music. It's just like, oh, it's just eating me up, bro. We ready, man. We ready, Ooh, bro. When y'all hear this new music, oh, and shout out to my dog in Virginia, man, Anthony Clary, aka Rock House. Um, he right there in Virginia. Um, y'all yeah. know I produce, but I got. If I had to say he's the producer's producer, he is actually my producer and the and the reason for my new sound. So that's what's up. Well, I'm definitely looking for it now, man. Oh yeah, and 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 some beats from K Drama. I got beats from K Drama because I had been so busy, yeah, wrapping off, you know, producing with other, um, getting tracks from other producers to create a new sound. So I got some stuff from K Drama. I got tracks from K Drama. I got tracks from um, Rock House. Um, Woo, the new stuff. Yeah, I hope I you get it, man. No, we finna kick it right back up, man. We finna kick it right back up. Thank you.